what is the difference between work and energy? How are they related? Let's talk about that in this video. Energy is a property. That's really what it is. Work is more of a process, a means, a mechanism. So energy is really an extensive property of a system. It's something that the system possesses or something that the system owns. A system that has energy, it has the ability to do work. Whereas work involves a transfer of energy. So work is not energy itself, but work is done whenever energy is transferred from one object to another. And that energy is transferred by the action of forces on an object as that object moves through a displacement. So work is equal to force times displacement. It's really the dot product of those two vectors. But let's think of an analogy that will really help you to see the difference between work and energy. So let's say we have an individual, we'll call him John. And we have another person, let's call her Sue. Let's say that John has $900 in his bank account. And we'll say that Sue has $300 in her bank account. The money in this bank account, that represents basically the energy. To think of money as a form of, think of it as energy in this example. Both of these represent a form of value. Now, let's say John goes to his bank, makes a withdrawal, and gives that money to Sue. And Sue, she deposits that money to her account. Sue's balance is going to increase by 200, so it's going to go up to 500. John's balance is going to decrease by 200, so it's going to go down to 700. The $200 is the transaction. You could think of that as the work in this example. So that's really the difference between energy and work. So the $900 that John had initially in his bank account, that was his initial energy amount. The $200, that would be the work that John did on Sue's bank account. He did $200 of positive work on her bank account. Now, Sue did $200 of negative work on John's bank account. So the transaction, which would represent the flow of money, you could think of that as work. Because work is really a transfer of energy, or you could think of it as a flow of energy. So think of energy as how much you have in your bank account, and think of work as the transaction, as that money moves from one account to another. That's really the best way to illustrate the difference between energy and work. So think of work as the flow of energy or energy in motion. And you could think of energy as energy in store, how much energy a system owns or possesses, the same way as how much money a person has in its bank account. In both cases, energy and work, they have the same units, joules. So work is the process or mechanism by which energy can be transferred, specifically through the action of forces. And energy is just energy, how much energy you have in the system or how much money you have in your bank. So that's the way I like to think of work as energy in motion, the flow of energy, the transfer of energy. Anytime energy moves from 
one object to another object, work is being done. Now, there are other ways in which you can transfer energy. Another example is heat. Heat represents the flow of specifically thermal energy. So let's say you have two objects. One is hot, the other is cold. Heat is going to flow from hot to cold. So you're going to have a flow of thermal energy from this object to that object. And that flow of thermal energy is heat, whereas the flow of mechanical energy is work. So this object has a lot of thermal energy. This one doesn't have much. And temperature really is an indication of how much thermal energy an object has. So the temperature for this object is high, which indicates it has a lot of thermal energy. For the other one, the temperature is low, which indicates that it doesn't have as much thermal energy as the other object. Of course, the amount of matter is a factor as well. But just to keep things simple, higher the temperature, more thermal energy the object has. Now, there's something called internal energy in thermodynamics. Delta U is equal to Q plus W. That's the formula in chemistry. In physics, it's Q minus W. And the perspective in which you define work is different. But let's say you, if you have a system and you want to increase the internal energy of that system, there's two common ways to do that. The first way in which you can increase a system's internal energy is by adding heat to it. As heat flows into the system, the temperature of the system goes up, the system gains thermal energy, and its total internal energy goes up as well. Now, the other way in which you can increase the energy of a system is by means of a force. So by means of a force, you can do positive work on a system, or you could do negative work on it. As you do positive work on a system, the internal energy of the system is going to increase. Now, this could be due to a variety of factors. For instance, let's say if you apply a force and you cause the object to accelerate, because the velocity of the object is increasing, the kinetic energy of that object increases, and so its overall internal energy is going to go up. Now, let's say if you use a force to move an object to a higher position against the force of gravity, you're going to increase the potential energy of that object, specifically the gravitational potential energy of that object. Now, let's say if you apply a force to a positive charge, and you move it to where it doesn't want to go, let's say to a positively charged plate, you're applying a force that goes against the electric force. And so when you do that, as you move it closer to the positively charged plate, you're going to increase the electric potential energy of that charge. And thereby, you're going to increase its overall internal energy. Let's say if you apply a force to compress a spring, you're going to increase the elastic potential energy of that spring as you apply it against the restoring force of the spring. Or let's say if you apply a force to compress a gas. As you increase the pressure of that gas, it's very similar to compressing a spring. You're increasing the internal energy of the system. So heat is not the only way to increase the internal energy of a system. You can do it um, by means of a force. You can increase the kinetic energy of the system, its gravitational potential energy, its electric potential energy, its elastic potential energy, and there's other things you could do as well. But those are the main two ways in which you can increase the energy of the system. Those are the two mechanisms, by means of work through the action of a force, or by means of heat through the transfer of thermal energy. But hopefully, 
so far this video gave you a good understanding of what energy and work is and the difference between them. So remember, energy is just a property of the system. It's something that the system owns or possesses, much in the same way as a person owns money. Energy is like your bank account balance. Work is the transfer of energy. It's a mechanism by which energy can be transferred through the action of forces. So think of work as energy in flow or energy in motion as it moves from one object to another. And heat, you could think of it the same way. Heat is just like work, it's the flow of energy, but specifically thermal energy. In both cases with heat and work, energy is being transferred. Now let's use an illustration to see how energy is transferred by means of forces. So let's say we have a block that's sliding across a horizontal frictionless floor. And let's say it's moving at six meters per second and it strikes another block. We'll call this block one. It strikes block two, which is at rest. So it's not moving. After the collision, let's say these two blocks, they stick together, but they move at the same rate, that is at the same speed. Let's say they move at a speed of two meters per second after the collision. So we have an inelastic collision here, which means some of the initial kinetic energy of block one will be lost as thermal energy. Now, initially, block one has kinetic energy because it's in motion. Kinetic energy is basically, anytime you have, anytime an object is in motion, it has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the square of the speed. Now, when block one strikes block two, block one is going to exert a force on block two. And that's going to cause block two to move from zero meters per second to two meters per second. So when block one strikes block two, it exerts a force on block two, causing it to accelerate from zero to two meters per second. So because the velocity of block two increased, its kinetic energy increased. Now, according to Newton's third law, for every action force, there is an equal but opposite reaction force. When block one collides with block two and exerts a force on block two, block two will exert a force on block one. It's going to be equal and opposite to this force. Now, whenever the force and the displacement vectors are in the same direction, positive work is being done on an object. So this force does positive work on block two because block two is moving to the right and the force was directed towards the right. So because the force and displacement vectors are in the same direction, this force is doing positive work on block two. And we know that the net work done on an object is equal to the change in kinetic energy of that object. So because the network done on block two is positive, the kinetic energy of object two is going to be positive, which means it's increasing. Now, block one, notice that its speed decreased from six to two. So its velocity went down, which means that it lost kinetic energy. And the reason why it lost kinetic energy is because block two is doing negative work on block one. The force acting on block two is in the opposite direction in which block one is moving. So block one is moving to the right with block two. So its displacement vector is towards the right. However, the force that block two exerts on block one, that force is to the left. So because the force and the displacement vectors are opposite to each other, Negative work is being done on block one. So block two applies a force that does negative work on block one. And because negative work is being done on block one, the change in kinetic energy 
block one is going to be negative, which means its kinetic energy decreases. So how does this relate to work? We know that work is equal to force times displacement. Block one was able to transfer kinetic energy to block two by the action of forces. And anytime you have a force acting on an object through a displacement, work is going to be done on that object. That work can be positive or it could be negative. But work involves a transfer of energy, as we could see. One object, object two gained kinetic energy, object one lost kinetic energy. So there was a transfer of energy taking place when block one collided with block two. Block one exerted a force on block two, causing block two to increase its kinetic energy. Block two exerts the same force, but in the opposite direction on block one, which causes block one to lose, to lose kinetic energy. So that's an example of how a force can be used to transfer energy from one object to another doing work on each object. One object, positive work is done on it, but on the other object, negative work is being done on it. So hopefully this example really helps you to see the mechanism by which uh, energy is transferred by means of forces. And that mechanism is what we call work. Each force is doing work on one of the two objects.